analog circuit 10, feedback loop, and stability. Uh, today, the subject is a uh, pretty hard subject. It's uh, any analog circuit. We use a lot of uh, loop back signal, and that causes stability issues. And this issue is probably a graduate school level uh, problem, but electronics uh, circuit you always need to be aware of what kind of uh, situation you have to get into this uh, consideration of stability with a feedback loop and for example uh, the feedback loop is used in many applications like a switching regulator this is like a power supply and uh, what you do is also DC to DC converter and every EV has this in the in the uh, in the car so what happens is when you this this when you have 12 volt you want to bring it to 35 volt or 30 uh, whatever the volt higher voltage DC how do you do that so first you uh, make a oscillator to oscillate and boost up the voltage by coil then you get this kind of signal then you go through detector the make it uh, DC and go through the filter right then you get DC voltage which is higher than this DC voltage but DC voltage this uh, you don't know how high it's going to be when you uh, boost up the voltage and change it to DC using a filter this DC voltage is compared to the target voltage comparator and you bring it to a switch so when voltage is too high the switch off make a pulse with a uh, narrower so that the uh, after filter the voltage drop or if this is too high voltage is too high uh, no voltage too low then open it so that pulse keep coming and voltage increase so this is a feedback to set the correct voltage uh, okay this is this this is used right now in the EV it's, uh, it's a very popular circuit they have the integrated chip that drive this uh, power fit and also this comparator is included in this chip so you can convert any DC into higher voltage DC using this method or switching regulator from AC you usually go through this in the filter and get the DC voltage but this also uh, voltage is monitored by comparator V reference and use the same method here to adjust so that the voltage can be precise say you want a 12 volt from AC so whatever the source of the power is you can get this precise voltage out DC out so setting the correct voltage 
this is a feedback loop, right? Um, second, like AGC, this is uh, automatic gain control. So you have an amplifier, and you know you can adjust the gain by negative feedback here, right? Okay, so this is like a electro electronic control potentiometers, right? So the gain can be controlled. And what you do is amplifier if signal is too large, then comparator shows like that. This, uh, the signal, this is a V reference, and this area shows up. So again, this one you go to the filter, make it a DC out. And this DC out control the gain. So it's automatically gain is control adjusted to the preferred level. So in this case, the any incoming signal is going to be tailored to the uh, certain uh, output voltage level. Okay? It's the automatic gain control. Uh, another example is called a phase lock loop. Suppose you have an unknown source of the pulse coming. And you want to discover the you, you have a, a oscillator here, and oscillator frequency can be controlled. And what you do is the actually this is logically exclusive OR, right? So the difference shows up here. If the difference is large, then going through filter again, and this comparator output control the fre frequency, the increase the frequency or decrease the frequency to match up with incoming uh, pulse speed. So this is called a phase lock loop is uh, to synchronize any unknown pulse coming from outside. You get the exact synchronized uh, oscillator, oscillator frequency. Okay, So those are uh, some example of uh, feedback loop. Usually those are uh, after you filter the uh, pulse or AC into DC, bring it to comparator and comparator output control back okay in the circuit design there are many feedback for example the high speed memory right bipolar type you have output This output go to the other side. So what happened is uh, this is gonna be uh, the positive feedback. So it create a latch, okay? And this latch is stable, and you need to understand why it's stable. And in linear circuit, we often use negative feedback. See, you have amplifier. Okay, and this is in, 
right? And this is going to be out, so it's a positive. But you give this V reference depend on this guy. So this is this is the negative in bar. In bar goes to the other side. So negative feedback. Okay. So positive feedback or negative feedback? We use this a lot. But the positive feedback is to bring the state extreme like high or low, like a latch, right? Negative feedback is to reduce the the gain. Okay, so when you use those feedback, you have to know uh, certain things. i give you an example here. Suppose you have a gate, logical gate, input and output. If you bring this to input, the feedback loop, what's happened to this gate? Okay, so if this is high, output is high, so it's high again, so it's latch up. But if it's low, this is low, it's latch, latch up to low. And when you turn on the power, which state it goes, high or low? Okay, so we don't know which way it goes. So this this is the logic gate uh, input and output. You go high, output is high, and that's become input. It stay here or stay here. There are two stable point. What's happened when you have an inverter? Bring it back. So, in this case, when input is high, output is low. And the low become high, uh, low become input, and the high output. So it's going to oscillate. Actually, it doesn't oscillate. It's going to stay somewhere around here or here or here, anywhere. Okay. Anywhere, it's a stable point. But when you turn on the power, you don't know what kind of level it's going to be, high or low. It's, it's uh, definitely it's not high and low somewhere between the high minus say one volt and low plus one volt or uh, probably it's going to be middle between high and low right so <coughs> negative feedback uh, it's also stable, there are some stable points, but different from positive feedback. It's create a different stable point. Um, even this case, the simple gate, okay, depend on how you make the gate, okay. For example, if you give a pulse, the pulse, if you look at the frequency domain, it's like this, right? or Fourier function is like this, okay? Now, if you have the capacitor and inductor into this, then what's happened? Because frequency, depend on frequency, impedance change, so these frequencies are affected, right? Then wave shape may change like this, okay? So 
if phase shift happen for some frequency, the wave shape change on the output, and this changed output is fed back to input. So it's not necessary it stay high or low, it may oscillate. Okay? It all depends how much phase shift happen. In this case, negative, okay, suppose you have more negative, say 11 gate, okay, and bring it back. This is called the ring oscillator, okay. When you make a IC chip, the first thing to do is to make a ring oscillator and check, see what the frequency divided by 11 gates is going to give a uh, the fastest gate speed for that IC chip process. Um, this is negative, so but there is a time factor, time delay. Okay, and time delay causes oscillation because when it's flipped to high, low, high, low, at the end of low, this come back and flip to low and low goes high, low, high, and high, and this flip to high, so it's oscillate. Okay, so time, time domain may have a cause of oscillation, of, or frequency domain may have a cause of oscillation. So cause of oscillation, you have to look at both the time domain and frequency domain. So when you have a weight hanging from ceiling and has a north pole and a south pole, and you have a north pole magnet, okay, when this swing this a little bit, you get close and give a positive power to swing more and remove its come back and go this side then this magnet get close give a little bit right so what you do is just give a little bit this swing become bigger and bigger oscillate right this is like the uh, differential equation, remember, uh, is going to be gx, right? And this g is the little push by magnet power here. And this differential equation become wildly different depending on what this function is. It's almost impossible to predict. This is uh, the uh, uh, nonlinear differential equation. So this result is really difficult to predict. Uh, like when you have a swing and use the leg, right? And the swing start swinging larger and larger. Okay, why? This is a time factor. This certain timing, you give us some kind of, you know, the swing by your leg, right? Then it's swing more, and this is the factor. You control this factor then this system is going to oscillate. Okay, without this, the swinging become less and less because of the uh, friction and settle into vertical line. Okay, so there is a time factor. You need a T here too, time factor. Okay, so this differential equation 
is not predictable. Time factor causing oscillation. You heard about a story that, you know, the, they build a bridge, but the winds blow not so strong, but winds keep changing direction, right and left. Then this start swinging. Then the bridge broke. Okay, so that can happen. This is the physics system, but circuit does exactly same, okay? And in the circuit is more difficult is frequency domain exist. So this is a differential equation become x is a plus jb okay so this this is an extremely difficult problem in analog design every feedback loop you have to look at very carefully and see if it's stable or oscillate, or it's oscillate only uh, for certain condition, you have to analyze it. So, this, th this is the most difficult problem in analog design. Okay. Well, I can show you some example. Okay, uh, let's look at more concrete example. Okay, now um, the previous video we learned about the the constant current sink. Um, this is what it is. It's uh, this set the voltage and this divider determine this voltage and this current is de determined by this R4, right? So this is the constant current sink and that's a diode is uh, mirror the same current here and here. So it's provide the, the current to each module by this standard current set here. And this is the reference, the voltage reference goes to the comparator, it's a error amplifier, okay? And if it's a, the uh, output is coming down here and this is desired output, you divide the voltage in the feedback, this determines the amount of feedback, right? The divider voltage, the oh, reference is the, the target voltage, and the output voltage is divided and go back to compare with the reference, okay? So what happens is, if this this output is higher then output become negative right okay so it's it's it goes down if lower then this exceed the reference it goes up so the output voltage is exactly as calculated by these two register value and the reference voltage, okay, and they all operate with a uh, constant current source. And why that is important? The input change around, but even input change around, uh, it doesn't uh, 
current constant current it doesn't change so it doesn't affect those operation because if you don't use a constant current then when input change the uh, voltage reference may change and this uh, uh, error amp actually comparator uh, operation may change too so make sure that this is a constant current so it set the voltage exactly the way this feedback loop defined okay now you may wonder what this is since this feedback is could be positive feedback or negative feedback depends what this output is right and when you start maybe input voltage is zero start up zero volt to say 13 volt okay then during this process transient uh, process this feedback loop you don't know what's happened it may start oscillating so what you do is when output voltage is low then this shut off when but the output voltage become high then this current start flowing okay so the this feedback process the there is a break feedback loop is broken by this shunt transistor and this shunt transistor is to make sure the feedback loop is set after the voltage reached to certain voltage so during startup anything happen unexpected things may happen and when start up the uh, feedback loop may cause oscillation okay so the way the circuit uh, diagram defined is the until until output voltage reach to certain voltage then feedback loop is established okay so this kind of design has to be done in order to make sure that nothing bad happened because if you don't have it, it, it when you suddenly apply 13 volt the feedback you don't know how whole things works it, it may cause some kind of instability and start oscillating so ic chip when you turn on it's oscillate and this kind of a uh, problem happened in ic chip often before until designs improved um long time ago though, there is a, uh, a dolby chip dolby chip what Dolby chip does is the frequency and the gain it's this kind of profile amplifier and it's switched to this kind so when it's switch recording high frequency is higher and when you play suppress high frequency that's to remove the high frequency noise uh, surpass the uh, suppress the uh, high frequency noise when you play the music okay and this Dolby uh, chip the single chip does this the single the gain depend on the frequency when you switch it's called uh, pop noise it's it's cause you know popping noise and some kind of oscillation happen 
short period and it goes away. And this os oscillation causes a loud pop noise. So when you switch the recording and playing every time you get a big pop noise. It's very difficult to uh, to figure out where this happened. Okay, so during a transition, maybe it's uh, it's, it's uh, just the kill the output and and change it until it's settled. Kind of uh, circuit design is necessary. Okay, so that's all it is uh, today. We don't have uh, hand-on electronics. If you like this uh, video, please subscribe.